Whenever you all are ready, could you tell me what you built and how it works? Yeah, so um, we built a real-time spatial audio simulator, um, which is able to play any music off of the internet coming out of a computer. You can plug the audio jack in and then listen to it through headphones or speakers and um, move the audio, virtual audio, around on a GUI to interact with the sound being played. So the audio comes out of the out of the PC, and then you can make it sound like it's coming from one or another direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your and behind you, and further away, and closer. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so basically, you can like move like the audio source like around on like this GUI, and then like the audio will change in real time, yeah. like actively as you move it. Okay. Okay. Um, how did you do that? Um, so basically, we have the input for the audio coming through this cord. So right now we have it connected to this laptop. It's read through. It's, oh, it's, it's ran through a. Don't um, it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't move it around too much. But um, it's moved through a biasing filter to shift it up for the ADC, and then low pass filter to remove aliasing. It's then fed through the ADC into the Pi, or the Pico, where we can mess with the... Yeah, data. so we have our sampling rate set at 125K, which is, we found, it was like the max that we could push it, given all of the processing. So pretty much, we are doing FFT in real time with like 2,000 bins, so it takes 2,000 samples, then triggers like a semaphore telling FFT to process the data, and then after the FFT processes it, we run it through a low-pass filter digitally, which actually we can, um, change the cutoff frequency based on the location okay. so farther away it sounds more muffled and then after the FFT and then the convolution then we do a reverse like inverse IFFT to change it back to time domain and then we output it through the DAC into the speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then for the GUI, uh, most of it was like implemented in Python, um, and so you can like change like the location and stuff. Um, oh, oops, I did not backspace. <laughs> That's what I meant to do. Um, and like the angle and distance, so you can make it like, I don't know, put it at like 30 degrees or something. Um, and then you can change the volume with like the keys. Um, and then, so all of this information is basically sent to um, the Pico through like the serial port. So like Python will like output serial and the Pico will like read it and parse the serial. Okay. And then what what's being visualized on the VGA? So the top one is just directly the output to the DAC. So then you can kind of see what you're hearing almost. And the bottom is actually the FFT after applying the low pass filter. So um, it's, pre it's in frequency spectrum, I think from zero to around like 6,000 hertz. And another thing that you can do on the GUI is you can turn on and off filtering. So turn on and off the muffling so that you can see the real difference of the distance being made. And you can also see the difference on the FFT graph. Yeah. So the muffling gives you a sense of distance, is that right? Mm -hmm. And then what is it that gives you the sense of left or right or direction? It also implements that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. In one ear or the other ear. <laughs> so basically, the GUI like, calculates the distance and the angle from the blue audio source to the pink head. And uh -huh. there's like, we have the right ear and the left ear set to like just 10 centimeters from the head center. And then basically, it calculates the graph. It first calculates an amplitude relative to the angle. So we implemented kind of a function like this, where we wanted it to be loudest at around 45 degrees to the to the ear, and then lowest at around like the other side, so 0 0.5, 1. Okay. So it's kind of a amplitude cosine graph. This is in polar coordinates. So this is like the first stage, which is the amplitude based on the angle, and then we do a distance scaling the amplitude inverse relationship because of physics. <laughs> and then we did another quick calculation about like the relative distance from the source to each ear, the difference in that distance divided by speed of sound to okay. get around how much delay there should be. And we actually found that like the max delay would be around 0 0.05 milliseconds, which according to Google is not perceivable, but it's 
we were able to like hit in. Yeah. We were able to, like, we were it's able like to an check our implementation. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We scaled it up to a much larger um, difference that we can see and make sure it was still sure. doing it correctly. Then we scaled it back down. Okay. And on the VGA, you can kind of see L amp and R amp. So those are the relative amplitudes incorporating both the angle and the distance. And L delay and R delay is in number of samples. So that's converting from milliseconds to like 125k sampling rate. Okay. And maximum amplitude is a thousand, right? Yeah. Cool. So could you could you play some audio and we'll see this this change? Oh, in, okay. Oh, and um, the blue is times ten, so it's like and just to zoom in a bit to so okay. see like the smaller signals. And if you move it on the location of the sound on the VGA, it will change. Okay, sure. So let's see. I'll zoom out, and then if you want to move that. Yeah. Can move it like to the front. Um, maybe closer. Yeah, closer. And then let's put it like sideways over here. Um, yeah, so I think the FFT only prints the effects of the low pass filter, and the output is just. The output doesn't incorporate the scaling so that you can actually see like the main. Mm -hmm. The big changes are happening in the amplitude here and then the delays here. Yeah, so then this output is like the unscaled version. Sure, okay. So that you can kind of like yeah. clearly see what the input is. Yeah, it's so like you're like we're on the left side, so the amplitude on the left is higher. And the right is delayed by 14 bits. Very cool. Yeah, it's most obvious if you just put on the headphones and just try dragging the source around in a circle and listening to it. Yeah. Okay. Can I try it? Yeah, for sure. Can you guys hold yeah. this? All right. So let's. We could also the after after we do the headphones, we could side. also plug it into the speakers and for the, the video. Do you think the video is gonna be able to pick up like final audio? I think it can, but the volume is here. Yeah, uh, arrow and you can arrow keys. keys up and down. Yeah. Okay. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also have it implemented so you can bring it behind your head and around. Yeah, so we all we did for that was we implemented like a more muffled effect in the back. So similar to the left and right amplitudes being more muffled in the back as well because of like the cosine graph yeah. that I showed you earlier. It definitely, the, um, the muffling in the back is really perceptible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can try clicking the green button, which okay. it'll change it in live time on and off. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's very compelling. Um, so, what would be cool to do? Maybe we've talked about this. Is uh, I can take that back if you'd like. <laughs> is instead of plugging this into the headphones plug it into the micro the uh yeah the microphone input mm -hmm. and record a video open up voice recorder and record some audio as you move the gui around and then when we play it back any listener on like on youtube or whatever should be able to hear the effect as you move the thing around that'd be really interesting to demonstrate cool this is this is really really nicely done um your your data interface in particular is really nice. <laughs> Pushing the limits. Cool. Thank you. That's really, really compelling.